Well, Matt, you know, I never wanted to get involved in politics. You know, I felt that same way too until I figured out that these policymakers end up creating laws and policies that affect your lives. Good and lately been more bad. Plato said once, and here's his quote, one of the penalties of refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. Do you want to be governed by your inferiors? How do you feel about inferior boss at your job? Inferior family members that make decisions for your family and it's inferior to what you think is a better good for the family or for your company, let alone your community. So you got to stand up and somehow find ways to get involved in politics. I didn't say you got to run for office. You got to make sure it's part of your process of being a citizen in America, that you do your job. A lot of guys moved from Dallas and California the last two, three years, different blue states, shall we say. You know, I asked him when he moved to Texas, did you register to vote? Did you get your driver's license? Is everything squared away for November? What's the point of you guys moving over here to be an entrepreneur and take care of yourself and make money on yourself, but you don't, you don't benefit the city, the state, the country if you don't vote? That's an easy way to get involved. Are you registered to vote is a very basic fundamental. Number two, the media is going to focus on creating this chaos. You just need to stay objective you need to take the position of you're gathering information, but don't jump to a conclusion. Just remember this, the media's job is to fill this statement. What bleeds, leads. They're not here to inform you of things that helps you. They're gonna inform you of things that get you to watch their network. So don't get sucked in. If you do get sucked in to gather this information, gather for what it's worth, but also have this discerning look at things to say, you know what, what's bullshit here? What is really the truth? And process it, and from both sides of the media, both. Right side, the left side, so therefore you can formulate your own opinion. Number three, create a plan and decide what your next moves are. You know what some of our friends are talking about while we're here in Bora Bora? Do we have enough weapons at the house? Yeah, sad reality. Do I have enough food at the house? Do I have a generator at the house? Can I defend my home? Do I have medicine at the house? What about from an economic standpoint? If the world shuts down, how do I make money? What type of resources are most important when things are completely shut down? For example, what was the most important to you when pandemic hit? You know, I figured out what was very resourceful for me during the pandemic, delivery drivers, toilet paper, food. Forget the money, being able to provide and protect and have food for my family, medicine, quality care for our family. Those were the most important things. It wasn't necessarily money. Money in a fallen state, money is just not money. It's a piece of paper. But what can I have in terms of goods and services and valuables that I could use to trade with other people if the you know what hits the fan. Okay, so say, let's say that never happens. What about you as a business owner? What happens if your industry gets affected? What happens if your economy, your personal economy, your, your salary, your job, you get cut? What happens if that gets affected? What's your plan B, plan C, plan C, even though you're focused on it on plan A? What is your plan in case this country falls apart? So therefore you go through this crisis, but you go through this crisis having a contingency and you have clarity, and best part, you've got confidence.